your life. Okay, good morning and Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, we are here to uh, hear Annette Mata Torres defend her thesis. So um, in just a moment, I will turn it over to her to tell us a little bit about her project. I want to welcome everyone who is watching and uh, watching online. And also would like to thank professors Luis Garcia and Aurora Rosardo for being part of this committee and helping us out with this defense. So we will ask Annette to tell us what she's been doing for the last couple of years. <laughs> Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about my thesis project as Professor Jane told me talked about. I'd like to thank her for such an introduction. And I want to talk a little bit about the author. Uh, in a moment, I'll be showing you the presentation. I'm just Does everybody see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Well, as I say, um, the author of this book is a, a very well-renowned uh, Puerto Rican celebrity. His name is Jose Nogueras, and he was born in 1951. His parents were Jose Nogueras Chapel. He was Juan Yasco, and his mother was uh, Milka Vega Soto from San Sebastián. He's uh, not only a singer, but a music producer, a composer, a writer, and he also plays the guitar. He has composed music for himself and other artists, such as Gilbertito Santa Rosa, Tito Rojas, Ruben Blathers, among others. He has won music awards, such as Cantante del Año, Compositor del Año, y Productor. Producción Navideña del Año. I think he's a very humble and strong person because he's a survivor of cancer. He got cancer in 2006 and he had to take a, a liver transplant you know, to recover. And he, I admire his positivity and his fighting, fighting spirit because I have experienced with cancer in my family, and three of the family members have cancer. And unfortunately, one lost his battle with cancer. He was very advanced. And seeing the person deteriorate is very difficult. And I know the process is humongously, takes a lot out of you because you can't do anything for that person. And I admire that of him. His book, his book is uh, like a collection of short stories. They, uh, they reminded me like the fables my parents used to tell, tell me because each story is, has a meaning behind it. It's trying to tell you something, giving you a message or a lesson and it makes you reflect upon, upon yourself, it makes you, motivates you to be better, to become a better person, to take care of yourself because in my family and with me that I've seen, we've always worried about other external elements like either work, studies, family members, friends, and then we pile on things on top of each other until it like blows over and it's not very pretty sometimes. And we forget to take care of ourselves. I myself had gone through um, very difficult times. I had very big depression where I just stopped everything, even stopped going out of my house with the help of my family and who gave me advice and books of motivation. I managed to get back on my feet, feet and continue my studies and 
also, I actually was never expecting to do a master's degree. But reading think books like this one, Positivo Siempre Positivo, motivated me to continue a, a higher education. And I managed to make it here today to the defending my thesis, which I never expected to do because the depression did affect me real bad that it lowered my self-esteem so badly that I thought I was really bad at everything. And I felt very good doing my master's degree in the university because all of you were so very kind and so very helpful and it motivated me to be here today. So I'm thank you very much for that. Um, some of the things that I've encountered uh, when translating this book is a few stylistic things like long sentences. I'm not a very fan of long sentences. So I tend to shorten them into several sentences when I can. Like in this example of the story, Cosas que no se, re se recuperan. In, uh, con esta oración de aquí que como las redes sociales tipo Facebook, Twitter, etc., se escriben cosas y luego se arrepienten. Muchas veces el silencio es la mejor respuesta, which I divided into three sentences. Uh, rendered as, like, when you use social media, use social media such as Facebook, Twitter, etc., second sentence, we write things to later regret them. Last sentence, most times remaining silent is the best answer. Another thing I encountered is that um, there were some errors in the source text. For example, in La Rutina, uh, the author is treating the emotions as if they were people by capitalizing their names and putting them in bold. But you see throughout the story that it's it's not uniform. Sometimes he forgets to capitalize it or put them in bold, so I have to edit it and fix it up in the source, in the target text. The other things were that the use of idioms in the, in the source text, like in El Automobilista, in the sentence, el del frente con mucho coraje salió de su carro y con cara de pocos amigos le dijo de mala gana. Normally, I would have translated cara de pocos amigos as grumpy face, y mala gana, like, grudgingly or reluctantly, but it didn't go well with the context because using grudgingly or um, reluctantly gives it the sense of being unwilling to do something. And grumpy face gives it, like, a, a sense that it, the situation is lighter than it actually is. In this context, they're trying to talk about a confrontation, about probably a fight or a person that's very angry and is about to shout at someone. So I had to rearrange it and render the sentence as furious. The one in the front got out of the car with a red face. He said in an aggressive tone, so that it goes better with the context of the text. Another example, my last one, is about problems of ethnicity. Sometimes these are controversial and can offend if you use certain terms for them. Like for example, I would never dare use the word nigger to translate those, those negros. So I went to a deep thorough investigation and. Luckily, I found an interview here that speaks about the correct term to use for Black people, which it is used here on the text, which I utilize for the text, which is either Black men, Black women, or Black people. This is some, just some of the examples of the things that show up in the text through, throughout. And this is the end of my presentation. And thank you very much for your for listening. And okay.
Thank you, Annette. Uh, so now we will ask Professor Lozardo to give her, to make her comments on your work. Okay, let's let us begin. First of all, Annette, I commend you for overcoming many obstacles and being able to be here today and defend your thesis. So that makes me very proud. And I do commend you on this big, bigger than it might seem achievement. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, as you know, this is an exercise where we yes. evaluate you. So I will uh, comment on some aspects of your work that I liked and some aspects of your work that mm -hmm. I was not entirely mm -hmm. satisfied with. Um, I do this with the love and respect that you know that I've always have for my students, but this is your last learning opportunity. So I will make some comments about things that I think that maybe you could give some thought still before you hand in the final version of your thesis, okay? <clears throat> One, let us begin with the preface, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, and I am going to point out a few things uh, that I noticed. Perhaps the most important observation I have to make is that sometimes what you present as translation problems are not really translation okay. problems. And mm -hmm. this is something that I insist a lot with my students, the fact that you don't know a word or an idiom or a extra textual reference does not constitute a translation okay. problem, okay? So there are some, and I have pointed them in your, in your translation. There are some observations that you make that I don't think that constitute a translation problem. And it makes, the reading of the preface may so at times a little bit tedious because you really don't know what the problem is. You really, really don't know what the problem is. And your reader is, uh, might not be interested in knowing that you look for the, work in, for the word in the dictionary. Okay. You know, that, that doesn't constitute a translation problem, okay? But there are some translation problems in your text, which at first might seem like a simple text, anecdotal, <laughs> And no, because as you very well said, and this is something that I consider idiosyncratic of the way Puerto Ricans speak, we do a lot of word play. Mm -hmm. And that those word plays should be, those are translation mm -hmm. problems, okay? And I would like to point out just a couple uh, with suggestions maybe, mm -hmm. and, and my observations. The, First one is the title of the book. The mm -hmm. title of the book is Positivo Siempre Positivo, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. there is a repetition in mm -hmm. that title, style-wise, uh, that is missed, is lost in your translation. I don't know if you considered something as simple and, and literal as positive, always positive which would be a literal title that is closer to not only the meaning, but the style of the author, okay? That is one possibility. Did you consider positive, always positive? Yes, I do consider it. And why did you discard it? <laughs> um, because I didn't... Really, it wasn't really calling to me. I didn't really think mm -hmm. it was best option at the time, but I can change it if. Now, I'm not saying that you changed it. What I'm saying is that I would not I would like and your reader, because remember the preface is what mm -hmm. is public, right? We don't mm -hmm. we don't share, and we don't publish uh, we don't publish the thesis as your translation as such, 
because it has copyright. It, it, it belongs to someone else, right? Unless you have an explicit permission from the author. So what we publish is the preface and the preface uh, it's a it's a very interest it's a very useful and important research tool mm -hmm. for translators. So being able to see a, a a logical process or your reasoning process will be very useful for other translators when they run into this kind of situation. Okay, so think that the preface should be uh, it should work like an independent text. And it should describe as much as your process so that your reader can understand and, 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 and make sense of, of your reasoning without having your translation, okay? And in that sense, I will just add, and this is something that you do have to fix. You have to put the examples. You have to write the entire sentence in the source text and how you translated it, because otherwise, the reader doesn't know what you did and okay. you're, you're, you're leaving words out of context. And you know that in translation context is so important yeah. that if you leave the words without the context, if you don't translate, if you don't present the sentence and you're on your complete translation, then the reader will not understand your process. Okay. So that's something that please take note because I marked everything in your preface. So you, it's, you will have a guide to what things, I, I would like you to reconsider mm -hmm. and, and, and improve in your, in your preface, okay? okay. So there's this uh, repetition with positivo, siempre positivo. And I'm not saying that you have to translate it as positive, mm -hmm. always positive, but it didn't ring to me, it didn't, I mean, then I need a more solid argument about why you chose that and you didn't, cho you didn't choose what seems like the obvious solution. Mm -hmm which is not incorrect in English and would convey better, not only the meaning, but the style of the author. And I think that style is something that sometimes we overlook when we are translating and, and, and style is the very personal imprint of the author. And, and we should be very attentive to those hints in, 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 the, in, 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 in a text, okay? Again, saludar es saludable, ¿verdad? You translated it as always be kind, right? I be kind to others. No, yeah. You be kind, be kind to others. This translation, the, the idea first of the word play, and then it's not being kind as, you know, give food to the people, to the hungry, uh, go and visit the sick in the hospital. This is something very specific. And this is what saved the man's life. He greeted the, the, the guard every day in the morning and in the afternoon. So greeting, the word greeting is fundamental in this text. Okay. And um, it's lost. Not only the, yeah. es the essence of the text, of, of, the, of the story, but also the style. And I was thinking, okay, if greeting is so important in this text, then somehow the word to greet or some form of greet should be in the title. And I was thinking, what about greeting is great just to play a little bit with the, with the alliteration of the GR and the T sound or... Uh, it's great to greet. I mean, I would, I would mm -hmm. give it another twist and, and see if you can include the word greet to the word greet or the verb to greet or greetings, uh, great greetings or great greetings is not a school, but to, to greet is great. It seems like a possibility. I'm not saying that you have to translate it like this, but mm -hmm. I think it needs a little bit more thought because that is a translation problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite okay. difficult trying to do something okay. similar. Okay, really okay. Calm. And sometimes when I, I when I translate with other people, we just recently, Luis and I were doing a translation together. And sometimes you just start writing things descabelladas, even if they're awkward and weird. And just mm -hmm. let your mind loosen from your initial intuition, just free your mind from that because sometimes those intuitions cling and, and they don't let you consider other possibilities that yeah. could be fun. And sometimes you, 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 
sometimes a, a, a solution appears that that could be more creative mm-hmm. okay or that could or that could be more suitable for the text okay I have the same situation with uh, más o menos, which mm-hmm. is a it, which and and again for me these are translation problems yeah, and these yeah. are the problems Absolutely. that render the text more difficult than it may seem yes, at yes. first glance. You okay, know, so the same places I got stumped mm-hmm. and was yeah. playing with them for a very longest time. I know, mm-hmm. and maybe my observation is that yes, you were able to uh, as there are some things that are not translation problems and I suggest you just eliminate them. But these translation problems that you identified correctly, I think you should play a little bit more, be more daring, be, mm-hmm. be more fearless, mm-hmm. okay? Eh, más o menos, at, in this particular text, sometimes can may mean more or less, but it's also so-so. Like I can live in a so-so house and, and that is something that you should at least consider and mention in your preface. Did you consider so-so? It does, mm-hmm. So-so doesn't apply for everything, but then what adjustments w- w- would, would you need to make in your translation? Because more or less doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. There are, and, my, and I marked it. So maybe there's not one solution that works. Maybe you want to say something like more or less so-so or, you know, play but but you have these word plays that are a big problem Mm -hmm. and that I would suggest that you think them over a little bit more and state the problem and 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 give a solution after you have presented other options so -hmm. that your reader knows what you did because I don't know how you came up to more or less I don't know if you think that that is the universal solution for this poem Mm -hmm. I mean for this for this text, in which case it, I don't agree. I think it's, it's not, mm-hmm. it is not. So you should, you should describe your process. You should describe your m- more, your options and maybe be more playful and maybe understand that some things I, that mas o menos as it works in Spanish may not always work in English mm-hmm. and you may have to make a little adjustment to the text, okay? The same uh, with take back. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I think you should give it a little bit more time. I have marked it, and one that is—it's really difficult. Anciano y viejo is mm-hmm. it's very, very difficult. But elderly and old doesn't always sound mm-hmm. correct. And I was even thinking maybe elder, which is like like it's a term of more the elders in a tribe or the elders in a culture in a society is better than elderly. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, think about those, those problems. Uh, and for instance, where uh, with the mention to the, to the black man, mm-hmm. you said that you looked, you mentioned that you looked at an interview. I don't know where you decided to say black person. Because black person is a little bit awkward, mm-hmm. okay? So, and of course, there are words that you would never mention with which you never met, uh, describe a black person, but that goes without saying. You don't have mm-hmm. to, I mean, come on. So, so how did you decide? How did you come up to this solution? Where did you look? I, you, in your preface, there's only one, Reference to a search that you did in the Dictionary of the Real Academia. Nothing else. You have one footnote for the Dictionary of the Real Academia, which is a, a common search tool, right? That's the, the common place where everybody looks. So how did you come to these conclusions? I, I would, again, I think that the most important thing about a prof preface is that your reader sees your process okay. and that your reader because and that and this is a very useful exercise because many times when you are a professional translator your clients are going to question your decisions but if you come very well prepared and you say I'd look this 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 here is how I decided okay. my final word then you 
you you you are more uh, trustable, right? You're you're more uh, reliable. Um, <clears throat> Aurora, before I forget, uh, now, now that you're mentioning the the the, the, the comment about the, the black, um, using the, the his, her research on, on using black, I would in in that regard, I would I would not use. Um, eh, ¿Cómo es que tú dices este? How I forgot how you translated. You say um, African American because it it will it will give it will give a hint that it's a black person and she is very prejudiced. Okay, and and it it it, it ends up yes being a, a, a an African American. Okay, because because um, Eddie Murphy and the other guy, I don't remember who, who he was, um, <clears throat> are actually African Americans. But it, I think if you if you if you just use black, it's fine. But we're dealing with with prejudice here, and she mm -hmm. has a very prejudiced thought, and 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 she is afraid because they are black. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. Um, she's not afraid because they're. African Americans. Okay, so it does, that's just a suggestion uh, on that part because I, I I just didn't want to forget about it. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so I would say Luis had other comments that he wanted to make. I will say, and also this is, uh, there are some typos and errors that, like Nogueras, in your presentation, you put Nogueras with an H. And in the first page of your title, it says Noruega. I mean, these little things, you have to be very careful. This needs a final proofreading, okay? This needs a final proofreading to make sure the original has errors. The original omits accents and, and you should put them correctly. Hold on. Ahora sí. Okay, but no. so make sure you give it a final, final proofreading to make mm -hmm. sure that you don't you don't have any any of those errors that that don't look well. So, Luis, if you want to continue and about the translation, just to finish, um, your translation is good. It's, very, it's it's good. Your translation reads well, and uh, so it it's 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 important for me that you that you understand that these are problems with the preface, okay? With things that I think that should be improved in the preface. But overall, Luis and I were commenting yesterday, the translation reads well, except for those instances where mm -hmm. you say, hmm. yeah. and, and, you know, and even maybe it is because we are traductores viejo mm -hmm. <laughs> and we look more into these things or elder translators <laughs> and, and into these things, you know, but, um, but your translation reads well. And um, and so, I think that 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 you did a good job, uh, but there are some careless mistakes that you have to take care of, and there is a little bit uh, of rigor that needs to be demonstrated. I, I I know that you did your research, but it has to be demonstrated in the preface. Okay. Okay. okay so thank you, um, Anit, for 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 having me here. I have a few comments, basic mostly mostly on the on the preface. And the first one I want to make is um, on the formatting. It's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was fighting a lot with the format. <laughs> well, it, it looks it looks fine. I don't know if it, the only the, the only thing is, is is it's always the mistake everybody does. Um, only a few of the students don't notice that. But if you notice your footnotes and your and your page numbering, those are those have different font types. Okay, so if you don't update the normal, the normal, okay. um, the normal style to to the to I think you're using Times New Roman, um, or whatever font you're using on the on, on the text, you will have a different font. Okay, so make okay. sure that all of all of, I, I mark them. Make sure that all of the font is 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 uniform. Um, also regarding formatting. Um, in, in your translation, you decided not to use, um, how say it in English? Sangrado, mar um, indentation. 
indentation yeah you don't indent paragraphs so you you should use um the either use the auto auto um Como se dice, um, fu uh, function for word, which which makes the the paragraph spacing a little bit wider between paragraphs, so that it it actually because what happens is when you when you justify and 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 the and the last period of this of the last sentence of the paragraph just goes all the way down to the to the to the right margin and you have another paragraph below it it doesn't you don't you cannot um, visually identify when the paragraph changes. So you either add a, an extra entry enter line, which I don't recommend because it will it will it would add a mistake when 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 page breaks um, happen, or do you either use auto auto or just change the the, the formatting uh, the um, the the space in between paragraphs to make it a little bit wider, so that it you could visually see it. Um, so that's that's regarding um, your formatting. Um, you need to fix your 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 references. Um, there's not a not a not a. Um, I, you said I think you have MLA in your bibliography, so you you're using MLA. Um, MLA doesn't use footnotes for references. You have to put it in parentheses. So if you if you have questions about formatting with um, using a style guide, if you're using MLA, there's a the Purdue Owl. It's fantastic. It's a very good very good um, um, website where you can learn on how to properly um, do the citations. And um, just so just make sure that you use proper citation when you are referring to a story, you use, you just you have to use it. Um, you have to quote it when you when you're citing a text, a textbook, it's in italics. OK, um, like, for example, your footnotes, you have a uh, Baker Mona, in other words, blah, 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 blah. No, that that reference goes in your bibliography or your references, and then you put Baker in parentheses, comma, and the page number. Okay, that's so. So make sure that you you use um, MLA adequately and according to the standards. Or, however, uh, because one of the nice things about MLA, it says you should do it like this, or as your professor tells you to do it. So you can lean on that, but once, but but if you lean on that, make sure that you always do the same thing your professor tells you to do. It has to be consistent. Okay. Excuse when me, I Luisa. Went... I'd like to interrupt with just one thing. Yeah. Uh, one difficulty with using the the inline citation with the phone with the page number is that the source text has no page numbers. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> so I don't know that the what she did to to remedy that was to write them out, you know, to go oh. go through and and number the pages in the source text, but that's still artificial as a as a reference and i don't know what she should have well that's a good question do about that one <laughs> um hmm. it has num so it numbers see, that's that's another that's another thing you could discuss discuss in your in your in your preface and ed the editing problems there's a lot of editing problems in that book it lacks good editing so that's another thing you can you can talk about, and then going back, going talking about the preface again. Um, I yet I don't know how to answer that question, Jen. I don't. I don't have a clue. But anyway, the the other references you can you can use page numbers um, with the search text. I don't know. Be original. <laughs> Think out of the box. I don't have a clue. Maybe you can. You can just. Um... Well, actually, the most of the stories are one page, and they are labeled. Long. They they are numbered, and they have they they have, yeah they are numbered. So you can actually use that number as a reference. Um, story number or whatever. I don't know. It it just needs to. You you need to make it easy to for for the reader to find that reference. Um, and it has to be uniform. When I, I was going to say, when I was when I was doing my 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 doctorate, um, I took a course 
on on researching and um, we had to re one of the projects we, we needed to do was a, a sub bibliography um, on any subject we chose um, so I asked the professor um, which which style guide should I use because I was used to using Emily but I didn't know what they used in Spain and she said I don't care whatever <laughs> do it you need to you need to you need yeah, you need to. It, it needs to be uniform, and I and the person and I need to be able to find that reference. However, you write it, I don't care. And I was like, no, I need a I need a style guide. <laughs> I need to have a style guide. So I, what I what I ended up doing was I I chose one that I liked. I saw one of one in one of the books. I liked that because I I think it looked good. <laughs> I, there was no no other criteria. And I just um, use that, but it, it needs to be uniform and it needs to be, the, the reader needs to be able to find the reference. So that's, that's one of the main um, guiding lights when, you, when you're working on, a, on, on, on inline citations and, and bibliographies uh, for me. Uh, yeah, everything has to be uniform because the, the reader is expecting uniformity and whatever and when you have very neurotic readers you they will see um when something is not uniform um and it it'll 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 strike you as why is this different is there's is there something that you want to tell me that i want to you want me to notice um so so yeah um there's i think there's a problem with your organization of your of your preface I think things are I, I, for me don't follow like a logic order um, I would suggest that you look at other 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 I there's some there's some um, pieces director that don't care but I like to use headers um, to signal what I'm about and I like to see an introduction that's me I like to see an introduction I like to see about the text about the author, about this, translation problems, translation type A, translation type, I'm a, I'm a programmer, sorry. And, uh, but I, I, those things um, help the reader um, know where they are standing. Um, and it also helps you to organize your ideas. Um, so I would suggest that you reorganize because for example, you start like on the first page, you have like a brief introduction, then you start talking about translation problems and what, why is she talking about translation problems here? This is, this is not the place right now. Uh, maybe you can, you, what you wanted to do was like give a slight overview on what problems you, were, you, you, you encountered, but I think you went into, the, into those problems. It's like, no, no, I had, this problem, this problem, and this problem, this type of problems, this type of problems, and this type of problems. That's that's what all what all all that I would expect on, on an introduction. And then afterwards you talk about the text. Um, talking about the text, I don't know what criteria you use to select your 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 short stories. That mm -hmm. needs to be explained. There's I mean there should be a logic to onto what drove you to choose this or that one or another um, uh, one one or another of the of the of the stories that 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 are showcased on the book. So um, and um, I will I will send you my, my I have I, I converted your 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 thesis into a PDF and I and I it's all marked with all my suggestions and corrections. And um, yeah, I'm a bit. Uh, yeah, you did. You talk about the yeah. Try, try to because that's that's one of the most. I think that's one of the most difficult parts for students when they when they have to sit down and and write a, a, a preface. You don't know what to write. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me that you sat down and you look at the computer and said, "What? Where do I begin?" It's in, it's in, yeah, yeah, it is. It's okay. it's very difficult. Um, part of it, 
I would I have to say it's 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 our fault because we don't do this exercise that many times during our teaching and it's something that I at least when I teach translation I try to I, I make even though it makes me work harder I make my students um, write about how they came up with whatever decision they made and I've even I've even um, found some scholarly texts on on how to write those type of 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 of, um, como se dice? of, of notes um, based on translation models and stuff like that. And so it's just something that I try to do, but what has helped my students is try to first, but well, first of all, you have to keep a, a bitácora, which is what, when I, when I did my thesis, and I will always say my, tell my students that I, I used a translation, uh, say, say, um, blog. Uh, no, a translation, uh, uh, tao, a cat tool, a cat tool. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I use a cat tool and, and I, I, actually, I actually was translating at, at the beach house with our internet and I had dictionaries, I didn't have anything. And I just sat down for over a weekend and basically translated the whole text from, in, in, one, in one shot because I didn't stop. Whenever I had a problem, I just marked segment, whatever. I had the problem with this. I looked in the dictionary. I couldn't find it. I have to research it further. Or segment number, whatever. Um, I really don't understand what the author wanted to say. I have to ask the author. Uh, segment number, whatever. Um, I, I'm not sure if I should do this or that. I should ask my counselor on how, how should I. So I actually kept a log of everything. Uh, all, all the way through, 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 my, through my thesis. So when I finished, it wasn't easy, but I had a log of everything that I had done. And I just needed just to look at it and say, okay, so which, what are the types of problems that I can see here? And that helped me. And when I see different types of that, that's a main group of, of, of okay, this is one thing I can discuss. This is another thing I can discuss. This is another thing I can discuss and that's it. And then I'll go into detail. So I'll give some examples on that thing. So that, that helped me organize uh, all that mess, all of those things, because that when, when, you, when you, and if you don't have a, no, a, a noting system, then that's a big problem because you won't remember. You yeah. won't remember what you, what you thought last week, actually. I'm not going to say two or three months ago or a year ago. No, no, you won't remember what you did last week and how did you came up with that decision because I, I've translated a text and, uh, that I'm going to use in class and when I'm trying to discuss it, I say, why did I chose this? I don't remember because I didn't write it down. Okay, so if you don't have that, I'm saying this for people that are watching so that they can... <laughs> be smart but you should try to see those major groups of, of, of problems and just group them and then talk and give some examples and that's it and that's how you that's how I, I, I suggest um, you write uh, a translator's note um, déjame ver eh, For example, there's there's a it's it's a it's a it's a question on for I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna make it a question, not a comment. Um, the on the loving gesture, it's number five fifty eight. Uh, short story. It ends with a quote from the Bible. Okay, why did you choose NIV? Which I don't know what what it is because it's not explained anywhere. Why did you chose that version? Version the version of the Bible. Huh? What version? The, 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 that translation. The story or the version of the, the translation. The, trans the translated version, because there's different different versions with different translations of the Bible. 
Oh, okay, yeah. So you chose NIV, and I don't, I don't know what NIV means. Well, um, I happen to have gone on a trip with my aunt. I visited my aunt at one time, and we went to this Bible bookstore, and I saw an English Bible, and I was like, I wanted to see the difference between my Spanish Bible and the English Bible, and I took that one. And I happened to have it on hand, when I came up with it in the source text. Yeah, but that's that's not a good reason. Mm. Okay, it's not it's not because you have that one on hand. It's for example, quién fue? Was it me? No, actually, did did we come across that Aurora in, in the text we were translating? Yeah, we did. Yeah, there was. <laughs> yeah, there there was there was a, a, a quotation from from the Bible and from the I New Testament. She, and yeah, and I asked you why did you use asked, Reina Valera? And we were dealing yeah, with Reina Valera, said, which is- And I said, yeah, which is one of the, of, of the most read authorized. And, and used authorized mm -hmm. versions. And I said, because the Reina Valera translation does not equal to what the English version says, and it doesn't, it, 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 it makes, it, it doesn't fit in the text. Yeah. You found so a, a, yeah. You found a version that was better suited to the wording of the original text, and I remember because ¿por qué no usaste Reina Valera? Pues porque esta traducción me me da mm -hmm. lo que yo necesito y Reina Valera no. But that's an, that that's a, and that this is what I I have also have been yeah. saying. I mean, we need academic or linguistic or you know that that's the kind of argument that we need, not just because mm -hmm. I bought this bible what if what you bought is a mm -hmm. not an authorized bible or yeah i don't know about I, I, bibles, I, don't, but... I don't may i may i insert mm -hmm. here i don't think annette remembers it but she and i talked about which version to use and okay. one of the criteria was the fact that the new international version the niv is by far the one that is most commonly used in english-speaking churches in the u.s now, and when I was growing up, it would have been decision. King James, but, mm -hmm. but uh, it's and no that is a translation decision. decision, and that's how how that's that's a, that's a reason to use a version. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, Jane, and Jane was part of this committee when Ben Cochran, mm -hmm. Ben Cochran translated a a book on uh, uh, um, it was a study on job. ¿Cómo se dice? Job, se dice, verdad? Job. 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 Uh, it, Job. 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 Mm. It was a study on Job's um, book, the book of Job. And uh, when he suggested that text, I said, do you really want to do that? Are you sure? <laughs> it's going to be very difficult because you, because why? Because the author is using a specific translation to make his point. And then when you, if you, if, he had to switch versions all of the time because mm -hmm. points he wouldn't have been able to make those points if he used the same versions all of the time yes okay so so he had and i said think about it i know you want to translate it something like this because it's it, it's really important for you but you're and he was translating translated into Spanish, which was not his native language. And I said, it's going to be hard. But that sort of problem is going to come up. It can come up with other things that are not the Bible. I yeah. translated an essay that was based on, on Borges, on, on, on a Borges short story. Mm -hmm. And I was going to use Andy Hurley's translation because he was my mentor but sometimes his translation did not fit the point mm -hmm. again that the because he was using the author was using it as an allegory for situations in in what well, was the forking paths you know uh, i yeah. don't, remember, don't remember before god or something i don't remember what, what the title is in spanish but it was about haiti and the dominican republic growing up on the same island and the different directions they took and sometimes the analogy didn't work and I mm -hmm. had to use a different translation 
of Borges rather than Andy Hurley's, even though I liked his better. I'm just a little bit biased, but you know, but I liked it better. So that can yeah, come and, up whether it's Bible yeah. or not. And it happened, and now you mentioned that it, when, in, when I did my thesis, I translated a, a doctor thesis from, from, from Dr. Treyes, and she was quoting this author, De Lu De Luz, I think it was De Luz, uh, or anyway, he was quoting some, some French author in English. So she, was, she actually read the English version of that text which was a translation from French, <clears throat> okay? So when I came up with that text, there was a very old translation from 1959 of that same text, but I needed to do an interlibrary, it was, it was very complicated. And we had a copy of the original text in French, uh, our library, surprise. So I said, oh, fantastic. I just take the original text and translate it from French because I know French and it'll be fine. It doesn't, it, no, because, because it went from French into English and from English into Spanish, then the point she was trying to make, if I'd used the translation I made from the French, um, mm -hmm. literally, it, 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 it just, I, I actually used my translation, but I had to tweak it. And it was not mm -hmm. a perfect translation from the French or the English. Oh, it, it, it was more closer to the English one because, because I needed to, to, to make I needed to make a point. Um, so those are translation problems. And those are the things and, and, and that the decisions you make that need to be um, presented on your preface. Um, Precisely because of what, I, what Aurora said. You remember when you, when, when I, when you took my, my herramientas class that we had the exercise we did on the, um, on the zoo? The, um, remember, do you remember that? Uh, the, um, we, had, we had some terms that you have to look for from the, yes. um, yeah. And do you remember that I did that they had the um, mistranslated the, uh, Long Island, um, mm -hmm. ¿cómo se llama? ¿Cómo era que se llamaba? The Long Island. Um... Oh, that's so far back. But no, whatever. I wrote a two page mm -hmm. explanation on why it was mistranslated and why it was because this was a museum and children went there and learned there. Why it was a responsibility for the museum to fix a translation error? But they were adamant. <laughs> <laughs> and they did not change it but yeah, I wrote I, I, I wrote a two page text mm -hmm. telling them why they should fix it even though they didn't do anything about it but I really I, I, I did my research I documented it and I presented it to the client and they decided but at least they were at least the, my contact knew perfectly that she was working with a very professional translator who knew who, what, was, what he was doing. So mm -hmm. that's what is important that you really not only do your job, but be able to demonstrate that you know how to do your job. So that's what should be reflected on your note. And sometimes it's difficult to, to, to see that because it, it needs a little bit of tweaking. <laughs> and that's... That's all I have to say. Do you have any questions? Uh, it was about the, no, uh, I got down Go answered already. Okay, como quiera. Uh, so, so Jane? Does anyone have anything further to, to add or to ask? No? All right then, so uh, I'll ask Luis to take Annette away for a little bit and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and our online audience as well will have to be Yeah, uh, our online audience, don't go away. We'll be back pretty soon, okay. um, so please don't go. All right, we are back. Annette, I'm very happy to say that your 
thesis has been approved and uh, you will receive a grade of bueno. And uh, congratulations. Thank You're going you to get your degree. I'm very <laughs> happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> very <Not happy>. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we're very happy for you. It's we're very a long, proud long of you. Journey. Yeah. Thank you. And it's, I always uh, forget thinking classes with all of you have learned a lot. Good. That's the point. That's what we <laughs> want to a, hear. That's the most important thing to learn. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> it's totally pointless. So this is our so, last chance to, yeah. to teach you. So, James, yeah. say goodbye to our, uh, to oh, our online audience. All right. Audience I will we'll, say we'll goodbye just sign to off. our I will sign off from our online audience. And don't anybody, those the, the rest of us don't go anywhere. But thank you for joining us today. Hi. I'm just going to click the wrong.